essential tip in my opinion for speed fishing for F1s is using a lasso. Now I use a band for when I'm fishing for carp or when I'm fishing for like using different size pellets I might alternate between a 6mm or an 8mm but I always use a lasso when I'm fishing shallow or I'm speed fishing because I know generally I'm going to be using a 4mm pellet so I can tie all my lassos to fit 4mm pellets. But the beauty of the, of the lasso is the fact I can catch four or five fish on the same pellet. I'll tend to use a high oiled pellet so it doesn't break down as quickly. But the benefit of this is during the match, if I'm catching two to 300 small F1s, the time that it saves me having to only put a bait on every four, five, six fish compared to having to re, you know, put a new pellet on, on a band every single fish, you know, amounts to a huge amount of time during the course of a five hour match. So as any match angler will tell you, feeding is one of the most crucial factors in any type of match fishing. And this is paramount within um, shallow fishing. You have to vary the amount of feed that, you, that you're putting in throughout the day and judge it on your bite. So I'll generally start off by feeding maybe 10 to 15 pellets and I'll feed them after every time I've hooked a fish, I'll tend to feed two so that I've fed whilst I'm not in the water to, to attract the fish back in after the disturbance of hooking a fish. As soon as I go into the water, I'll slap my rig on the top and I'll feed again. And it, you have to just judge it to your bites. So the more bites that you get in, sometimes the more you can feed. So what I'll tend to do is ship out, rotate my rig two or three times, and then feed 10 to 15 pellets over the top of my float. And I'll try and do this every 30 seconds. Another point, is don't, fi don't fish too far out. If you've got a headwind coming to you like we have today, if you're fishing too far out and you're pushing yourself and you can't get your bait accurately around your float, it'll just infringe your fishing and you'll end up drawing the fish closer into you. Always fish where you can comfortably feed. And there you go. As soon as the pellets have hit the water there, I haven't even had to strike because I'm fishing a really short piece of line between my float tip and my elastic and we've hooked a fish straight away. A key, a key feature of when, you've, when you're shallow fishing now is slapping. Now, this isn't just a case of, there you go, prime example. As soon as your rig hits the water and you've basically mimicked, mimicked some pellets hitting the water, the fish react to it. Because yours is the only pellet there, instantly the homing on that pellet and hopefully you get a bite. I'd like to explain in a little bit more detail though that slapping isn't just about trying to create a foam on the water it's you've got to sort of work it out throughout the day and how the fish want it so certain days you can you can rotate your rig three four five times um, and create like a really loud splash on the water and there'll be other days where they might literally want it almost laid over the top of them and it just it completely depends on how the fish want to feed on that day how aggressively they're feeding and this is this is the whole thing with with shallow fishing you have to adapt it every time you go as we're talking about with your feeding um, so each time you go, you just need to modify things. You know, there'll be a general plan that you stick to, but as I say, with slapping, it's not just a case of going out and every single time it's three times. You might go out and you might do it twice. You might go out, you might do it once the next time. And the next time you might need to do it three or four times. You just have to, you know, each time you go out, you have to sort of keep changing things throughout the whole day. It's really important when you're selecting a Dacron connector, in my opinion, for shallow fishing, that you select one that has a, a super stiff um, link between your elastic and the end where your rig goes. When you're shallow fishing, you'll notice that you'll get lots of little indications on the end, especially when you're holding a tight line to your float. And you want to minimise any movement between your elastic and your line. So on the new Matrix Dacron connectors, we've used a super stiff coated braid. This is by far the stiffest material that we could find to do the job. To also enhance that, we've actually twisted the Dacron together. So this almost doubles it up and creates twice the thickness. Again, just all enhancing the fact that you're trying to keep this as rigid as possible. The beauty of using a Dacron connector when you're fishing shallow is not only does it prevent your line from wrapping round the top of your, your top kit, 
which it would do if you were using uh, like a stomp floor or uh, if you just had like a crow's foot, you just had a knot in your elastic with, the with your line tied around it. It also prevents your elastic from being damaged because you're not tightening your line round the elastic, you tighten it round the dacron or the coated braid, it prevents any damage from, your, from the uh, line cutting through your elastic. I always like to use as short a hook length as I can when I'm fishing shallow. This allows me to get my bulk really close to my hook and get the bait down as quickly as possible. 90% of my shallow fishing, I'll always use a four inch hook length. On very rare occasions, if I'm fishing deep shallow or I'm fishing for bigger carp, I might use a six inch hook length. It's really important as well when you're using um, hook length boxes that you have a good quality one that is weatherproof, especially when you're storing bands because they do perish. So make sure you always close it on your side tray. Don't leave it open because the UV light will not only damage the bands, but it'll also damage all of your monofilament.